Welcome to another Grid DB video. In this one, we're going to showcase how to build a low cost industrial Internet of Things solution using Grid DB on a Raspberry Pi 4. The project will use a Node Red flow that uses MQTT to read temperature sensor data from an Arduino PLC and then visualizes that data using Grafana. Also, guys, please don't forget that all the written content, including links and code snippets, are available down in the description below. Okay, so first up is hardware. We mounted the hardware to a DIN rail, wired the temperature sensor, set up the Arduino IDE, and deployed our Arduino sketch to the PLC. The ground wire of the temperature sensor is connected to the Arduino's ground pin. The 5 volt wire is also connected to the Arduino's plus 5 BDC pin. The sensor wire is connected to pin 2 and a 4.7K ohm resistor is placed between the plus 5 BDC bus and the sensor bus. Multiple DS18B20 sensors can be attached to the same Arduino pin if you have a large enough terminal block, which is one advantage of using the DS18B20 over an analog sensor. We're going to start by getting our Raspberry Pi up and running. So first we need to install Ubuntu, and then we go ahead and build and install the GridDB server, Node.js, GridDB Node.js client, along with Node.red and the nodes we'll be using within Node.red. GridDB needs to run on a 64-bit architecture operating system, so we'll use PyImager to write a 64-bit Ubuntu 18.04 server image to our microSD card. Once that's ready, we'll use the Mosquito MQTT broker on the Raspberry Pi. The Arduino will publish messages to a topic on the broker, while Node-RED will subscribe to that topic. No configuration is required for our simple demo, so we simply install and start. To continue, we need to get GridDB server up and running on our Pi. To do so, we can follow one of our previous blogs, which will show you how to compile and run GridDB on an ARM 64-based Raspberry Pi. Uh, once you have that running and verified, we can go ahead and download and install the GridDB web API. Now we can install Node-RED and the nodes we're going to use. So unfortunately, the GridDB Node-RED um, node isn't available yet from NPM, so we need to manually grab those from GitHub. And once you do that, we can add the GridDB client to our node path and start Node-RED. All right, as a small note for this next step, you can just um, use your Pi that you're running this project on, or you can just use your personal workstation. Uh, that's what I did. But anyway, so you need to install and start the Arduino IDE. And once that's ready, we need to install the Arduino Modbus and Dallas temperature libraries into the Arduino IDE. And for the Arduino setup, the required headers are included and our Arduino's MAC and IP addresses are configured. We're using pin 2 to receive the signal from our DS18B20, so we must configure the one wire library as well. First, we'll add an MQTT listener node red that subscribes to the temp topic. For the listener to work, it needs to have an MQTT broker configured. In this case, our broker is running on localhost and has no special authorization required. The output of the MQTT listener is converted from a string into a JSON object be before being converted into the format that the GridDB put node expects. Finally, the GridDB put node has a data schema configured for what is the input. Here, the container name is not required, as the container is specified by the message topic in the input. This way, multiple sensors can have their data written to multiple containers without individual GridDB put nodes. For Grafana, you can install using the actual instructions provided by them on their website. It's very easy. Then we download and install the Grafana GridDB data source. Once you have all that running, we can log into our web browser. Once in there, the first step will be to create a GridDB data source and confirm it works by inputting the host name, port, cluster name, username, and password. With the data source working, we can now create a dashboard and then create a panel within that dashboard. We select which container and which time series column to view. Those data points will now be plotted by Grafana. And better yet, Grafana makes it easy to zoom in and out of the data ranges to examine details or explore long-term trends. Alright, well that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you for watching and happy developing. And please remember, if you have any questions, just hop on over to Stack Overflow and we'll answer them there.